I'm going to be begin reading another book now, and it is, this book is called Waking Up Together, Illuminations on the Road to Nowhere by Paul Farini. The Road to Now Here. Nowhere is not a bad place. It's just the place you come to when you stop avoiding this moment, when you stop trying to find a better place than the place where you are. When you look closely at the word nowhere, you notice that it is composed of two words, now and here. When we finally realize that all of the roads to somewhere lead to this place and this moment, our proposed destination doesn't matter much anymore. Where are you going? Our companion asks. Oh, nowhere in particular. We answer, content to be where we are and knowing that we oftentimes don't end up where we think we are going. I'm just traveling this road because it stretches out before me. I'm not really sure where it leads. Willie Nelson and Jack Kerouac aren't the only ones on the road again. We're all on the road. Life is perpetual motion. Even if we endeavor to stay in one place, change will find us and push us out the door. We are all on the road. Some of us actually think we know where we are going. But sooner or later, we'll find out that was just a strange conceit. You can plan your journey as much as you like. You can take suitcases full of clothes, even some of your favorite furniture, if you want. But, but it will all be for naught. In the end, you will have to give up all the baggage of your past and every idea you have of the future. You see, you can't prepare for this moment. You can't anticipate this place. It just can't be done. You can try to do it, but you will be disappointed. You can keep trying and keep getting distraught with when your pictures of the future don't match reality as it unfolds. That's the promise and the disappointment you'll find as long as you think you are going somewhere. But there will come a time when you know, without a doubt, that you aren't going where you think you're going. There will come a time when someone asks you where you are going and you'll say, I have no idea. And you won't even feel anxious when the words come out of your mouth. Once you know you aren't going anywhere in particular, you begin to relax because you realize that there's no rush. You don't have to break your neck getting someplace on schedule. As you may expect, there are no accidents on the road to now here. Sure, people occasionally bump into one another, but no harm is done and there are no hard feelings. People can't help being where they are and sometimes more than one person occupies the same space and time. There's nothing to be done about it. You have as many companions as you need on the road to no, now here. But after you're, you've been on the road for a while, you realize that the journey doesn't have a lot to do with anyone else. It's primarily about you. You are the subject. No, not metaphysics or healing or anything outside yourself. You are the subject. Your thoughts, your feelings, your words, and your actions. If you are willing to turn your attention to these, then you will enter the path fully. When you lead, I mean, when you leave the road to somewhere, you stop losing yourself in the world. You turn within. The road to now here is the path to your own heart. It le leads through all of your fears and self-deceptions to reveal the shining truth about yourself. Not many people want to know the truth about themselves or about others. That's okay. There are plenty of imaginary roads to travel that skirt the truth or keep it at a safe distance. But after a while, those roads do not satisfy. You've been in all the stores. You've played miniature golf for the 400th time. There's nothing to do that you haven't already done except admit that you are going nowhere. That admission will change your life. There's certainly no doubt that it brought you to this book. Welcome to the place you never left, though you have journeyed far and wide. Welcome to time that does not change, although the sun still rises and sets, and the moon still waxes and wanes. 
pulling and pushing the tides. A single moment of honesty can change a life, bringing it full circle. Nothing is different on the road to now here than it is on the road to somewhere, except your awareness. But that makes all the difference. Some time ago I wrote this little poem, or to put it more accurately, it just popped into my mind. There is no net, only the open sky holding our tears. There is no animal, only the pain unraveling. There is no God, only us stepping into our divinity. It is not easy to watch our idols fall. Our parents were not perfect, yet they deserve our love all the same. Our teachers were not perfect either, nor were our friends and lovers. Those who cared about us, though they wounded us or betrayed us in reaction to their own pain, did the best they could. There is no one to blame. Those who we have condemned have learned to put the past behind them, or they soon will. They have gone on with their lives, and so must we. There is no one to praise. Those we have lifted up onto some pedestal have fallen into the mud and mire of existence. The gurus have all been caught with their hands in the candy jar. There are no men or women better than we are, nor are there any who are worse. No one to look up to, no one to look down upon. There is no teaching better than any other. Every intellectual system, scientific, theological, esoteric, metaphysical, comes to a reality it can neither describe or account for. Every holy scripture has been distorted in translation and obliviated by the words and actions of believers who profess to uphold it. There is no net to hold our tears. We are disenchanted, disabused. Our balloons have been deflated. Our fantasies have hit the ground and broken into tiny pieces. Human beings have let us down. Ideals have betrayed us. We have learned the hard way that there is no one outside of our own experience to praise or to blame for our condition. Where we are, we have arrived by ourselves. True, certain people have contributed to our direction, but not a single one of those people is responsible for it. We bear that responsibility ourselves. We sit alone with our pain and our joy. The embellishment on either end is gone. The highs and lows have been demystified. At last we have contacted the ground of our being. And where is God in this strange equation of our aloneness? For many, God is the answer to our powerlessness, the final authority in an emotional landscape crying out for boundaries. We may not know what is going on, but God does. Our faith in him is like a pill or a pana, panacea, an addiction to hope that temporarily takes the pain away. Faith like this may last for a while, but in the end it self-destructs. When we stand like Job in the midst of our suffering, the God of absolutes has no answers for us. Only God within has words for us, the still small voice that addresses us not just on the mountaintop, but in the valleys of our experience, the one who brings love in the midst of our aloneness, our pain, our disconnection. When we meet the divine within our own hearts and experience, we know that our spiritual journey is not a linear one. It moves up and down and all around. And wherever we are is where we must learn to be present fully. Wherever we find ourselves is where our spirituality must be. In the old days, we went to church, the temple, or the ashram, looking for God. And we found all manner of authority figures who promised us salvation. We learned their theologies, studied their scriptures, investigated their esoteric, only to come up disillusioned, disgruntled, overwhelmed by the emotional demands of our everyday life, which refused to be placated by words or concepts. Now we know the outcome of that external search. The authority we seek cannot be found outside ourselves. If we want authentic spirituality, we must find it at home. We must find it in the wrap and woof of our daily existence. 
Welcome to the road to now here, the only road that does not promise you a destination. After following the road to somewhere through endless detours, the unpretentious road is a welcome sight. No praise, no blame, the sign says, either enter only if you are ready to be where you are. Contrary to popular opinion, the road to now here is a real road. It is just like the road to somewhere, except that it has no particular destination. Or, if it does have a destination, you don't know what it is, so it might as well not have one. Indeed, knowing where the road goes would not help you. On the road to now here, you have a distinct advantage not knowing where you are going. The road to now here stands directly before you, and you will set out upon it for no other reason than that it is there, and so are you. You will walk it backwards and forwards. You will stray from the path and return to it many times. You will have lots of thoughts about what it all means and where you are going. But they will simply be mental chatter. They won't mean anything. None of your thoughts will deliver you from the road or make it end sooner. Those of you who have walked the road less traveled never knew it would come to this. You thought you'd find the same God encountered by the pilgrims, but not so. That God is dead. That God has abdicated. He no longer wants the responsibility for your life. Welcome to the road where God is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Welcome to the place where knowing is based on realizing that you know nothing. There is a road going by, but you don't know where it is going. Standing by the side of the road, you don't know <clears throat> whether to go right or left, or whether to stay where you are. You don't know. Sooner or later, out of boredom, no doubt, you will make a choice. You will go right or left and you will get excited thinking that you have made the right decision until you come to some difficult terrain, and then you will be convinced that you went the wrong way. This will happen whether you go right or left. It makes no difference. Sometimes it will seem that the experiences that occur in your life are the result of the choices that you have made. Other times it will be clear to you that these experiences would have occurred regardless of what you chose and when you chose it. Every attempt you make to figure out the meaning of life will be frustrated. That is the nature of the road to now here. Everybody is on it, but only a few people know that they are on it. Only a few have given up trying to figure their lives out. Only a few have surrendered, walking the road for the sake of walking, taking each experience as it comes, without judging it as good or bad without analyzing it or interpreting it. Only a few people walk the road breathing deeply, eyes alert to everything around them, content to go wherever the path leads. Every person's journey on the road to now here, but most people are convinced that they are going somewhere until the car breaks down or they fall down a ravine. Then they know they weren't going where they thought they were going. But even the majority of those people get up, dust themselves off, and buy a ticket to a different destination. They stay on the road thinking they are going to a different place than the one they went to before. They do not know that there are no different places. All places are the same on the road to now here. All experiences lead to the same place. And that place cannot be described. You have heard of the cloud of unknowing. Perhaps that makes more sense to you. Clouds are blown about by the wind. They aren't going anywhere in particular. You can relate to a cloud going nowhere, but you can't relate to a road going nowhere. Why is this? Perhaps because you built the road, you know where it leads, or you think you do. You didn't know it would come to this, did you? No praise, no blame, no intellectual solutions, no one to fix, not even yourself. Nothing in particular to say or to do. Or perhaps you knew and didn't want to face it. So you went to work on the 22nd floor and you got married and had kids. Or you found a hippie or a meditation teacher, but none of that worked. Now, perhaps it doesn't seem so surprising. Nothing works on the road to nowhere. Now here. 
unless you don't expect it to work, then it works. Have you ever tried living with no accept expectations? It's a non-sequester, is it not? How can you try having no expectations? You can't. No expectations only happen when your expectations just drop, either through total exasperation or total boredom. It just happens and you notice it. But as soon as you try to duplicate it, it stops. God doesn't perform for anyone. God just happens to.